Good evening, and welcome to the Performing Arts Center. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Kevin Borg. I've been in the school district for 26 years, and this is my 17th as a superintendent. And I just want to say that one thing that's kept Jill and I here for that long is what we have here tonight. And for me, that's the small school advantage. When you talk and you communicate an idea and you have staff, you have families, you have the community, and we all come together, and we try to develop a plan, and a plan that can help our kids, a plan that we can help our students, a plan that we can help our community. And so tonight I'm gonna to talk a lot about facilities. And it's more than a project. Today we're talking about how we can ensure that we keep our kids safe. Today we're gonna to be talking about how we can grow the opportunities for our students so they can learn and grow in a time such as present and future. And we're also gonna talk about how we can increase the pride in the West Honka community and the West Honka district. As you can imagine, our school board facilities committee and myself, our administration, we're constantly looking at our facilities. And in that review, we don't think of just one student in mind. We think of students of different ages. We think of students of different abilities. And we think of students of different interests. And what we want to have at West Tonka are facilities that serve all of these kids very well. Now with our operating budget, we can do smaller projects, smaller maintenance, smaller repair. Maybe one year we can prioritize that we can do a section of a roof. Maybe it is that we can do an air handler or two. Or maybe we can prioritize our budget that we can remodel a couple classrooms. But if we want to do something larger, more comprehensive, we need to bring a bond to the community. And in bringing a bond to a community, through 17 years of experience as a superintendent, I know our best ideas come when we have alignment. When we have alignment between our staff, our parents, and our community. So today's effort, is to engage. Today's efforts are to answer questions that you have on our school board facility committee's priorities. And then at the end, when you leave, it's really important. You have a website or a QR code. We want your input. We want to know what you think of our plan, what you see as the strengths, where you think it can improve. So we got a lot to cover. I'm going to start off with a presentation it's a lot of slides. It's longer than I like to talk, but I have a lot to share. And at the end of that, we're going to open up, if you have questions and comments, we're going to try to finish this up by 8.30. So let's get started. With our comprehensive facility review, our school board facilities committee in the 2021-2022 year, we looked at the following topics. And we got these topics out of years of feedback from parents and community. Facility maintenance, looking at our grade configuration, early learning phase two, security, looking at building capacities, the educational design to support our students, and activity space. Our school board facilities committee spent a month or two on each topic, and when we got done with this review, we said the first thing that we have to make sure that we have is capacity for our students. So we did a demographic study in the spring. In this demographic study, it showed that we're gonna have relatively flat enrollment over the next 10 years. So really looking at about six to 80 students is what's projected. And when we got that feedback, we said we should be in a sound position at our primary schools, our middle schools with our building capacities. And so what we looked at is what parts of the project really connects to the enrollment. And for us, it is building capacities, it's grade configuration, and it's early learning phase two. When we see enrollment rise, we feel it's time to address those topics. But we wanna do that comprehensively, not piecemeal. We don't wanna add on one building and later on say, well, we actually are going this direction. We wanna know, should we add on to each building or should we develop and create a new building when we see that enrollment, that need? So what we're looking at is putting those together at a future step. What we think is the next step 
is what we surveyed our community on in August, which is looking at facility maintenance, campus security, the design of our education space with a focus on the high school, and our activity space. And so in August, we did a survey with the community to test, would you support a tax impact to see an improvement in these areas? And the feedback that we got from our community was really positive. 79% said yes, we would do that for safety and security. 78% said they would do that for deferred maintenance. For the redesign of the high school, 74% would say we would support a tax increase to see those improvements. And then finally, for activity space in the stadium, 60%. So we had sound support on all these areas. And what that told us is it made sense for our staff to get involved. It makes sense for them to put time into this project. And so what we did is we formed focus groups with staff around maintenance, around security, around activities, and around the high school design. Part of that was doing site visits, and it was incredible. Our staff were able to give us feedback of things they thought we could advance the education for our kids, and we took that feedback back to the facilities committee. With that, the facilities committee continued to prioritize their work, work and it's really led us now to where we are today. January, we started meeting with staff, reviewing these plans. We met with a couple parent groups in February, and it leads us to where we are today. Now, from this point forward, we can envision ourselves doing another community survey to get feedback on the tax impact to the progress that we like to see. And I think our board would be in a discussion this summer on a potential bond project if we felt like we had alignment. So let's dig into the board's priorities. And they, again, are district-wide security, deferred maintenance, and high school redesign. When we talk about district-wide security, there's a lot of components to it. Part of it is how we staff our buildings. Part of it is the training that we do. Part of it is our relationship with the Mound and the Orono Police Department, our SROs, and how we engage. Part of it is just the culture that we create, that when you see something, you say something, and how we all engage in the small school advantage to ensure our schools are safe. But one important piece is that we have responsive facilities. One center stone to having responsive facilities is having controlled entrances. Grandview Middle School is the only building in our district that the entrance does not go through the office. That's best practice. We feel we need to change that. And for the high school, with the volume of students that we bring into this facility, morning, night, during the school day, the summer, to handle that in a safe way, we need a more prominent entrance both on the north and also by the courtyard for the high school. I want to show you a little bit with Grandview. What you're looking at is a blueprint of the main floor. Those of you that haven't been to Grandview, you park in a parking lot, and our staff does extended efforts to make this a safe environment by operating a buzzer intercom system. Students will go into this vestibule, they push a buzzer, and either Grandview will say you can leave that and they'll send a staff down to get something, they'll meet them at the door, or the visitor could, if they knew them, walk down to the office. But the office should not be that far away from an entrance. What we're looking at doing, one change is when 2016 that we passed and we were able to build this facility, it took the pressure off the stage in Grandview. And what we want to do is convert the stage area to Grandview to an office so visitors would be able to walk straight ahead and the office would be there. Now part of it, this works out great for security, but what makes me really excited also is the education space that was the old office is right across from the media center. That is going to be wonderful used space for our staff to enrich the education for our kids. I'm gonna be talking about the high school 
entrance a little bit later. In all of our buildings, what we're proposing to do is putting in security zone separation. What you're looking at here is the second floor of Shirley Hills. And the red dots would be closing off the building so that if someone in the office, if they felt they had an emergency, they could push a button and it locks it down in set areas. This way, an intruder would not have full access at the facility, which we feel would better keep our kids safe. People would be able to get out. They would not be able to go in. The other thing that we like about this plan is by utilizing these doors, if we're running something on a weekend, if we're running something at a night, we don't have to give full access to our whole facility. We can quarter off giving them access to what part of the facility they're using and have a more secure building. A third thing that we're looking at is hardening glass at entrances and select areas so you cannot break through and enter. We're looking at perimeter door monitoring. So if someone opens a door, an alert goes to those people monitoring it, or if they prop a door, and visual alerts, which are strobes. So if you put on an alarm, the strobes will be showing that we're in a lockdown. Now, this next stat is important to me because these are the people that run our schools. Like I said, I went to our staff. I did six different meetings. Each of the buildings, our district staff, and our early learning staff. And the feedback when I did this presentation with staff, 96% of our teachers, our administrators, our educators, felt that we were prioritizing these needs correctly to help them better keep our kids safe. The next area of topic is district-wide deferred maintenance. If you haven't noticed, West Tonka has old school buildings. So we date from Shirley Hills to 51 to what some still refer to as the new high school, 1971. And with that, in 2011, Thanks to an effort of the community, we passed a bond to do maintenance. And in that maintenance bond, we were able to do a lot of things. But since that time, some new maintenance items have shown themselves. Now in your handout, you can see by building some of the specifics for them. That's not a complete list, but it gives you a little bit more detail. But what we're talking about are basic needs like air handling. We're talking about boilers, panels and fans and piping, both domestic and sewer. But to give you an example, one thing that we're proposing this time is that it's time to replace the 1971 boiler here at the high school. The last three years, over 50 service calls, over 150,000 on a very inefficient system. It served us well. We can be happy that we were able to stretch the legs on a system, but it's time. Some of the maintenance is also outdoors. And so when you look at our tennis courts, if you look at our track, if you look at the turf on the infield of the track, and if you look at the baseball field that our youth and our JV work, all of those are in very poor condition. We have to apply maintenance to these areas. When we talked to our staff about this portion, our staff thought 98%. We had a very high turnout of staff engaging with this feedback. The third area is high school redesign. Why the high school and not other buildings? One, it's the greatest area of need, and also, it gets the greatest use. So, the high school opened in 71, and with the exception of the business ed and transition plus, our academic wings in this building have not been renovated since 93. So those of you that were here at the time, you remember getting this brochure. In 1971, we announced the new high school. In 1993, Sue Peglow was the board chair at the time. Some of you know the Peglow name. Talking about how we have to update our schools. Now you take yourself back to the 90s and what was happening the computer was being entered into the school. And so what they were looking at was bringing in computer labs. They were looking at our science areas. They were looking at our media centers. One of the conversations, I came in 97, but one of the conversations at Grandview Middle School 
was do we want a phone in each classroom or do we want one, one per floor? Now just let that sink in a little bit because that was cutting edge of the conversation at that time. Then, in 2011, we passed a maintenance bond to help improve the maintenance district wide. A lot of work at Shirley Hills, Grandview. We also redid our locker rooms in this building. And then in 2016, we did this facility in the activity center. But when we look at the academic areas of the high school, 93 was the last time. And you can look at it from 71, educationally, they needed to do a redesign in 93. Now we've gone another 30 years. The second reason is the amount of use that this facility gets. This is the community's building. I'm very, very comfortable saying that there is no facility in this area that has greater use than the high school. You come by here at night, in the morning, on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and I would argue how it doesn't get used on Christmas Day and Christmas or Fourth of July is a miracle because I think all but those two days, you're going to see cars here utilizing this facility. And it's not just by high school students. You're going to see that we focus on the whole community. And so whether you're an early learning child, student or if you're utilizing it through community ed, it gets great use. So when we look at the high school redesign, we're talking about redesigning educational space to enhance learning and engagement. We want to address special education needs, and we want to talk about student services. We want to accommodate our growing athletic needs and expand vocational opportunities. Further, we want to improve the functionality, the safety, and the pride of this building by looking at maintenance and safety, space constraints on our cafeteria, parking, and storage, and really looking at a comprehensive maintenance solution. And dilapidated, that's not a light word for it. That is what it is. Tennis courts, track, and turf. Now here's the good news. I showed this brochure earlier. In 1971, when they sent it, just read this paragraph, because it's interesting, when you're announcing a new school, they're already talking about being remodeled. But they built it in a way that allows us to remodel it very efficiently, cost-effectively. So let's talk about what we're looking at when we're talking about redesign of the high school. The first thing I'd want to point out to you that our classrooms, many of them fall below 900 square feet, which is standard for a classroom. We currently have three teachers on a cart. And the reason why I point that out is that we would never put a teacher on a cart if we had enough space. Never. And then finally, we don't have room for future programs. So let's look at a little bit about how teaching and learning has changed since the 90s. When you go into a classroom in the 90s, desks and rows worked out great. It was a time that you looked forward, you had a whiteboard, or you had one of these. Boy, was it nice as a teacher at that when you got the new color transparencies, New curriculum adoption, got to social studies, we love that. Put that right in. But everything faced the front. Students were listening, they were recording, they were memorizing, they were assessed. When you had multimedia day, you had one of these rolled out in front of the classroom. And when you had a project that you wanted to work on, you took the students to the lab. This is the design of our education wings at Mount West Tonka High School. Let's talk a little bit of what's changed. Our students now have one-to-one -one devices. We've long not brought students down to lab. Students access information both from instruction from the instructor, but also them facilitating the discussion, which they work on collaboratively, and they're applying knowledge. 
We've been able to enhance critical thinking skills and collaboration skills and creativity. But when you look at the efficiency of rows of desks or tables and chairs, it's not just space, it's sound, it's noise, it's movement. So when we look at some of the square footage of our areas, you can see how these fall. Looking at a 720 square foot class, desks and rows just means that the rows are a little bit tighter. But to fit tables, do collaboration, just puts that much pressure that you have an appropriately sized classroom. I think this is a powerful stat. We talk to our high school teachers. Now, I want to preface this because I take a lot of pride. This is a school system that is providing some, your students, the families, these teachers, some of the best in state results. They have a lot of success. And what they're sharing is 88% of them think they could increase student achievement if we could give them appropriately standard sized classroom to do the things that you see here. Now, as I said earlier on, we have a budget that we can remodel a couple classrooms, and we did that in 2018-19. We did it with our business that area. By the way, if you didn't notice, bragging point, 155 students. Even taking on a DECA project, that they want to do a paper, an academic extension off their normal load, but 155, which is 20% of the student body, is going, went to state, and now 28 of them going to international. But when we see them engage with this redesigned space, and we did it as a test to see how it works, we noticed an increase in collaboration. Kids took pride in their space and we could see a teacher fully utilize and advance our students. So what we're talking about is taking our classrooms from the 90s, taking it where our staff right now are working around the facilities to have the facilities advance their efforts and get it where we can do collaboration. Now, another thing going back to the 90s, if you saw kids in the hallway, you would have thought either they must be grading a test or quiz, or they're in trouble. That's what got you out in the hallway. No, these are kids doing work. These are teachers that are expanding their classroom. And what we found out when we we're doing tours of other facilities is if you widen the hallways, you create what's called a flex space which you're taking kids off floors and you're putting them on tables. And it's a cost efficient way for staff to be able to utilize space, share space, so that we can enhance the learning for these students. This would be done in the academic wings. So when we talk about redesign the education space, we're talking about enlarging undersized classrooms. We're trying to take it from a set and get model and bringing it, using the term 21st century doesn't work anymore. We're talking, that was long ago. We're talking about allowing kids to utilize the tools to meet in groups and to have appropriate space to do their work. So one is to enlarge undersize, the other is to add the classrooms to get people off carts. We're also talking about renovating other spaces, so our music rooms, our art rooms, media, engineering, woods, and the little theater. One thing interesting about the little theater is when we built this space, we said, let's see how we're gonna use that space. And you know what? We use it all the time. We use it for classes, we use it for large group meetings, we use it for small production. In fact, if we invest in the space, we're gonna create more opportunities for people. Not just the community, but for our kids. Some talk around a one-act play, be a perfect space for that. 
So what we're talking about with these different areas is to renovate them, modernize them. I think a lot of you are going to understand from the 70s to the 90s to today with special education. A lot of new mandates, a lot of new expectations. Expectations require space. From 96 to 2022, we saw a 25% increase of the kids that have special needs in our district. Largest area of increase, autism. Now our staff has accommodated this growth by dividing classrooms or taking areas that weren't originally classrooms and making them classrooms or removing other classrooms, teacher on cart, having space. This is what we know, is we got to size the programming to fit the program. It's best to have space designed for their program versus where they can fit decision making. And so when we talk about autism, let's think about sensory needs. And then think about dividing classrooms or where we can fit. We know we can do better. So let's talk a little bit about where we would propose adding some of the space You're looking at this, the top of the map is north, the bottom is south, at the bottom you're looking at the activity center. What I like about going on the west corner, this is headed towards Thaler, is that is our academic wings. That's math, science, social, English. At the end of the hallway, not only do you add space, but if you've been in these education wings, one thing they need, natural light. The other area that we're looking at taking into helping this space is what's current office area. It will be a way better academic space than an administration space. Again, natural light for our students. Now one thing I really appreciate is this community's interest and support to ensure that our kids are safe. But I gotta press on this because when we look at safety needs, far too often we don't think of this as that same safety need, but I would say it's even more so present. When we talk about kids that have anxiety, depression, when we talk about kids that have gone through trauma, when we talk about kids that have seen abuse, when we have kids that are dealing with chemical issues and how we support them, we have a talented staff. We need to do a better job of giving them space so they can do their work to help our kids. Now when we talk about mental health services, we do this in partnership with families. But the expectations around schools have grown considerably since the 70s and the 90s. What we're looking at here is where how we were set up you have at the time, back at that time, three guidance counselors in the back of the room in our administrative area. But I want you to picture this of being a child that has anxiety or going through an issue. They want to see their counselor. You walk into the office by the main desk. You see a parent dropping off something. Keep on walking, you see your teachers coming out of their mailbox area, or you see another student coming out of the nurse. And you wonder, are they going to be willing to make that journey? Does it provide a calm environment, a private environment, for them to get help? Currently, because we don't have enough space in this area, we have therapists by the wood shop. We have them by the music wing. We've spread out because the service is important. We're going to find some space. But what we want to do is consolidate. So we want to add space to support the programming. We want to be able to create it separate from the administration, and we want it to be calm and welcoming. Now, like other projects, we want to accomplish a couple things in one. Where we're looking at adding the space is on the north entrance. This is what I like about this area. One, natural light for these kids. Two, you're right next to the media center, which is calm. In fact, the media center is the one area that we feel like we can take some space from to be able to provide some of this service. Three, we're able to give a secure entry into the north entrance by building that out 
and overseeing it, which is going to help us on nights, weekends, summer. So by doing this addition there, one, we keep our school safe through security. We also keep it safe by providing the counseling services, mental health services, in a space that we can really advance their efforts. When we talk about mental health, let's also talk about wellness. A lot of you can appreciate how we've advanced our activities again since the 90s. You look at what we offer right now as a portfolio for our kids, it's awesome. And it'll continue to grow. What we know with our space is due to the number of activities of what, and also what we do in Phi Ed class, before school, during the school day, after school, summer. We've outgrown it. I like this picture to show that we've outgrown it. No advisor would intentionally move that amount of weight into the hallway if they didn't need to use it. And we use the hallway a lot. Now what you're looking at is not a plan. It's what you do until you get a plan. What the plan has to be is hallways are for, for people to walk down to enter the gym here. That isn't that you zigzag athletes as they're training. And a tile floor is not the surface that you would design for a fitness area. What are we proposing to do? We're proposing to do what our neighbors have done, which is providing a facility that gives the size and is designed in a weight and accommodates the growth for our kids to engage. And why not design it so it even attracts people to want to do it? Where we're talking about building out this space, we have a hallway from our gyms that come down and we would be building it behind the activity center. We can and need to do a better job of vocational. Right now we have 151 kids that are enrolled in Woods. We have 36 students that are in our Pathways program. Now the Pathways program is awesome. It gives our kids access at a lot of different programming that as a school our size, we could not offer. But I can tell you why we have 151 kids in Woods, and that's because it's in our building. We need to have more programming in our building so kids have that opportunity. What we're looking at is this. We want to have three vocational tracks that can be used in multiple different ways. First is machining. One, you're going to be able to take a vocational track down this, but also we can use it for our engineering program, where they can apply their learning and put it in action. We have a growing robotics program here at West Tonka, and it gives them a space. Currently, they break that down and have to put it away or haul it away versus storing it. That can be used three different ways. We want to add a nursing and emergency response program. We look at the needs that we have in society and what are the pathways to help needs. We have a lot of kids that are interested, but you got to show them the pathway. And so through this program, what we've seen in other communities is students can obtain a CNA, a certified nursing assistant, which would allow them to work at nursing homes and assisted living, right out of this program. We also have seen through programs where they can get certified with an EMT, an EMERT. And with this, we can support kids that are wanting to go into, into uh, law enforcement, that want to be part of a fire department, that maybe want to look at a four-year degree. But think about the opportunities that we could provide kids here in our school. And then lastly, we want to push forward our woods program so it gets into carpentry. So what you're looking at here is clean machining, where you can see robotic tables. You can look at nursing programs. 
EMT, EMR. And what we would do is build out so we could create a construction program in Woods 3 and 4 so we could build small homes. Where are we looking at putting this? Where it was years ago. So what you have up in that corner already is woods and engineering and we'd be adding machining. And then for nursing, we'd be looking at the science area, building out that way. 96% of our non-high school staff thought we were talking about the right priorities. Why do I share non-high school? Our high school staff is all over this. This is their space. They're begging for this. You have 96% of your preschool, of your elementary, of your middle school staff that are saying, you got the priority right. You got to focus here. We also want to improve it for functionality, safety, and pride. We want to look at safety, cafeteria space, storage, maintenance, and school choice. I've been talking a lot about having a more prominent office. I showed you a little bit on the north side. I want to talk a little bit about the courtyard. If you're a visitor and you go to the courtyard, you just start walking. You're not quite sure where you're going to get in or where you're going. And then you get to the end and you see this 10E down there and you say, I'm going to try this one. And we buzz her in. A school the size of the high school needs to have a more prominent entrance than a vestibule to handle high loads of students. Weekends, nights, mornings, school day. And so what we're looking at is putting it into the corner of where you were just entering. And what we like about this space is one, you're going to know where to enter. Two, it feeds into our cafeteria. It can load in and we can do handicap accessibility now into this facility. We're looking at building out space in the courtyard. Secondly, when we look at the cafeteria, this is the cafeteria space. But to accommodate our students, we wind around the stairwell and down the hallway. You would never design a cafeteria this way. What we're looking at doing is expanding the space, bringing in natural light. This will be a reception for this facility. We use it for classes during the day. After school, we use it for programs. It's far more than just a cafeteria. We're looking at utilizing courtyard space. I've been using a lot of storage as we're doing some of these improvements, and really we have to replace that storage and add a little bit of storage so things come out of the hallway. We're looking down by the athletic and the academic area. So in all in all, you've talked. I've talked about adding space. Currently, we have 188,000. We're talking about adding 32,000 square feet. Large part of this is to enlarge the classrooms, widen some of those hallways so we can have that shared flex space. We're looking at adding space so pro programs aren't on carts. We want to increase our vocational programs. We've got to expand some space for special education. We can do a better job of supporting our student services, our counselors, our therapists, giving them space. Creating these secured entrances, enlarging the cafeteria. I want to talk a little bit about outside. What you're looking at is a 1970s picture. And that was the beginning to the Thaler Center there with outdoor hockey. What you have a picture here is the 80s. And what you see that's only changed is we went from six to nine courts. You have a sidewalk coming out the back of the gyms going to the track there. 2022. Things really have not changed over the last 50 years. Now, like I said, this whole area that you're looking at, the tennis courts, the track, the infield there, and that baseball field all require maintenance. But when we do maintenance here, we want to move it forward. 
We want to think what our community needs moving forward versus just replacing it where it is. Now we've repaired these in the dates that you've seen. In the last time I repaired the track and the tennis courts, the contractor said, we will not do it another time because we cannot warranty our work with the sub base that you have with these systems. We got to do a reconstruction. Let's talk a little bit about tennis. Right now, we don't have enough courts to support the programming that we have. So quick math, you got four, four athletes on a court, nine courts, 36. You got 64 kids out. Now one thing that's great about courts is now courts aren't just tennis, it's used for pickleball, community use, other things. But when we look at our surrounding communities, they have 12. What we're talking about is advancing so we can get more kids on courts. Where we're looking at doing this is across Sunnyfield. So by our bus garage, we have a knoll. We're looking at putting the tennis courts and putting parking up there. We like this because 12 courts fit there. We also really like this spot because we're in great need of parking. And parking needs to be close. We can get about 70 spots, 70 plus spots on this area. We also like it with the tennis courts that if those are used for pickleball, it's separated from our campus. So if the community is using that, they're not on our campus. We get more use of the space. Talk a little bit about turf. Every school district that offers football, soccer, and lacrosse has synthetic turf with the exception of West Tonka. Why? Because natural turf takes a lot of abuse and it's just not in good shape. We need to have something that we can practice over and over on. Hadorf, we rest that all summer just to get it back in shape. Now, what you're looking at here is field two. That was a community effort, a grant. It's a wonderful field of grass. Field three, field four, great fields of grass. Hadorf, I just got done saying, we rest this all summer. It's a good field of grass. We practice in this green space, for the most part, and this green space. They're in very poor condition. We need to take the next step and put in natural turf on field 12. Now what we like about this is that it's in poor condition. We're going to get a lot of use out of that space. Finally, sometimes when you do research, it's hard for me as a superintendent to share. I love promoting the positive things about West Tonka. I love bragging about West Tonka. But when you come across a fact like this, and you know it's important so people understand, it's really hard to communicate. West Tonka is the only district in what Wright County Conference that doesn't have a stadium around its track. There's 12 districts. We go far west of here. We're the only district of any of our neighboring districts that doesn't have a stadium around its track. In our section football, we're the only district that doesn't have a stadium that offers track. We cannot fit a track in Hador. What we're talking about doing when we redo the track is adding bleachers light scoreboard around the track. And Bruce and Sharon are here tonight and in my discussions with them, they're open to finding a way that we can utilize the indoor bathrooms and concessions so that when we use that space, we can enter and have use of that. So what we're looking at doing is reconstruct the track, add the stadium around, we're going to be able to access indoor bathrooms and concession. We're going to have better accessibility to the stadium with the parking. And the thing that I really love is now when we look at this space, we can use this all summer because we're going to be able to take performances on here, which will free up that. We just gained a field. You 
you can look at every district around ours and I can show you pictures. And then lastly, our JV baseball field, regrading irrigation and adding an appropriate backstop in this location. 98% of our staff said that we prioritized this correctly. So we're very fortunate to live in a community that supported our schools. As I mentioned, you saw a bond there for 2011. We passed levies. In 2016, we passed a bond. I know that our community cares about our kids and they want to advance our schools. What we've tried to do is put this into steps so people can understand the value of what the next investment is. And so we know that with the improvement, there's a cost that comes with it and it has to reach a value. So let's talk a little bit about what the project costs. When we look at district-wide security, those improvements that I went through at this time, as we estimated, is about 7.4 million. The deferred maintenance is 36.2. 26 of it is in the building maintenance. 10 million is for the maintenance of the track, tennis courts, fields, but also those improvements around that is 10.2. And then the high school redesign is 47.9. Now with the high school redesign, there's some maintenance involved. It's hard to separate everything out because when you look at it, that includes tile, it includes light. When we look at a new high school that are just being completed now, you're well over $100 million. You have this chart on the back of your handout. It's a chart that you've seen. West Tonka doesn't just have the lowest school taxes in Hennepin County, it's by far the lowest school taxes. But sometimes we don't know really how it compares to our neighbors. Closest neighbor is Orno, and on a $500,000 house, they nearly pay $700 more a year on taxes. And then you take that up to Waconia, that's almost $1,300 more. So when we look at what by how we estimate this project and where we're looking at things today, what would the tax impact be? For a $400,000 house, it would be around $16 a month. $500,000 house, $20, $625. And when we get to the point, we'd have a tax calculator that you could enter in the cost of your home and what that would be. We're looking at a 25-year payment on this bond. When I really boil this all down, I like to come back here. What you're looking at is the little theater in the high school. And I think this really depicts what this project is about. You have a space that served its purpose back in the time but since is undersized. It's dated. Our staff had to work around this facility versus this facility advanced their efforts. It limited opportunities. Our staff worked hard to do the best they could with it. And there wasn't one person that said, I want to come to the West Tonka community or enroll in the West Tonka district because they have the little theater. Not once. Then we built this space. Now what we saw, we advanced staff efforts. We advanced the opportunity. We advanced the pride. And when people came into this space, they said, do you see what we have in West Tonka? I'll tell you a story. I came out the door when we opened this facility, and at that time he was a junior, one of our students. And he said to me, I can't believe we have this in Mound. And it broke my heart. I was happy to have it. But our kids can have these things. Our community can have these things. And we've seen how they've been utilized. 
One thing I pride ourselves of is when we talk about this space, as the sole purpose is educating our kids and expanding opportunities, it's always about community. And those people that have utilized this space know that's being delivered on. For bonds to be successful, we have to have alignment with our staff, with our parents, and our community. When we took this to our staff, I was very proud that we had alignment with our staff. Our beginning is showing that our parents have showed interest in how we're approaching this. But the diligence is on us to keep on asking and engaging, and that's the reason why we tried to broadcast this event tonight so we can hear back from you. And so two things. One, I want to open it up for question and comment. And two, please, please, please give us your input because your input matters of how we move these forward.